And joining us for the very last segment is Nana Ohini Into, Senior Advisor, Alan Sharmating. Alan Sharmating is the uh, independent presidential candidate who is the founder and leader of the Movement for Change, a movement that is sending some uh, shivers down the spine of uh, some people. And now suddenly, they have been able to bring together nine others under the umbrella uh, of the what they call Alliance for Revolutionary Change. So let's hear uh, Alan Chamating briefly, something very quick he said at this meeting. That is visionary, competent, accountable, transparent, action-oriented, resource-driven, and compassionate. A leadership, a leadership that will fight corruption ruthlessly and lead by example and not provide a safe haven for corrupt political appointees and other public officials. Implementing transformational policies. Governance is about policy making and execution. What Ghana needs now are transformational policies in all sectors, namely in the microeconomy, in the productive sectors, including industry, trade, agriculture, tourism, in infrastructure development, in social services delivery, including health, education, and sports. Speaker. Thank you very much, and you're welcome back. And as always, the show is brought to you by the kind of sponsorship of My Way Insurance Dial. Star 165 hash, star 165 hash on MTN to join My Way today. Syntex tanks, it's strong, it's tough. Flamingo paint, simply superior. And DBS Industries Limited, roofing, pa 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 fear. So, I'm not going to the, the talk in town is that, yes, people are surprised at the numbers you are raising in the places that you go, but it appears you are just intended to be spoilers. Is that what you are up to, to spoil it for MPP and NDC so they don't get a one-off victory? Thank you very much, uh, Samson. I think that statement or that thinking in itself is the problem that we have as a nation where we are so taken in <clears throat> with the duopoly of MPP and DC that now the vote of Ghanaians is their bona fide property and that nobody has a right to touch those votes that divinely, possibly, God has shared the votes of Ghanaian voters between MPP and NDC so that anyone who made any significant attempt at bringing Ghanaians an alternative in terms of leadership doesn't even have a right to go and touch those votes. They have to go and look for some votes from the sky and that these votes are sacrosanct. For me, that is really, really problematic. And it is a mindset in our quest for improving government, governance, political leadership and direction, is a mindset that in itself is a major block to any opportunity or chance for us to shift the trajectory of our, of our political direction. But you admit many Ghanaians say, we need a third force. Exactly. Are you the third force? So, so now it's emerging. I wouldn't say, you know. But you see, I was going to tell you, Right now, when you hit the streets, you are in media. Just talk to ordinary people. You don't need to use any particular set of criteria to choose. And then ask them. So MPP and DC election is coming. It's a lot of despondency. There is a lot of hopelessness, a lot of apathy. Why? That is a major phenomenon that we need to interrogate. So if you are really in touch with the people and how people are feeling now, 
if there was any time when Ghanaians truly wanted a change, let's even say simply for the sake of change, it is now. In terms of the partisan nature that the Fourth Republic especially has experienced, and to the extent that now, <laughs> I had this joke that if you are walking by the roadside and you found two dogs or two goats or two cockerels fighting, depending on the intensity of the fight, you can tell that these are MPP NDC goats <laughs> or MPP NDC dogs or MPP NDC cockerel. I mean, we're making a joke of it, but that should tell you how bad partisan politics in our democratic experience has taken us and how much it is now affecting our very capacity to think, to make choices, and to even pick alternatives that clearly will give us a better run for our money. Mm -hmm. So that, that statement for me is unfortunate and it is really, really pathetic. Because there are some who are saying say that, that the, 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 no, let me, the, let the, me, level, yes. the level of the deterioration of the partisanship yes. can be seen even in recent events like the, the Ameri plan that was taken to Kumasi. Those who brought it were not giving any role whatsoever and the whole credit was given to the president. When I was on my way here, I was listening to the discussion of my uh, friends here. And I was telling myself, just this Ameri plant transfer alone should be enough for Ghanaians to decide that enough of MPP and NDC. I mean, you can't force anybody to shift their thinking. But we are presenting a case. Alan and some of us are presenting a case to Ghanaians that there is no need for us to sink into this state of despair and hopelessness because we are stuck with two entrenched political parties that are not meeting our hopes and aspirations and yet our hands are in the air in despair. Now today, by the grace of God, Ghanaians know who Alan Chamateng is. And fortunately, when you look at the constitution of Ghana, the power that the constitution gives to the president is not given to a political party. So even if the president would have come out of a party, once he assumes office, the political party has basically nothing to do with the, party, the president's exercise of power. I mean, to the extent that in recent times, we saw in President Kufuadu's case, his own party's members of parliament who provide him with the bulk of political support within the government structure. Basically, he went on rampage saying that we want you to change the finance minister. So and so is becoming too much. He said, listen, I am the president. Um, you have issues, but I'm sorry, I cannot change him. He didn't even listen to his own party. Of course, he has that political, uh, the presidential right and the power of the constitution. But you see, this is exactly why today, if Ghanaians are truly concerned about our current situation and the fact that the extent to which MPP NDC, winner take all, that partisan duopoly is restricting our capacity to grow, then it is time. As for some of us, we will just present the issues. I talk to people and they say, mm, uh, Alan, yes, we know Alan is the one that can help us, but would Alan win? And I ask them, if you vote and I vote, Alan has won. If you truly think that there is a need for change, and it is all in the air, mm. and you truly believe that you have confidence in Alan's capacity, because there's a record for you to check, mm. he's because been, Alan cannot win mm. before you vote for him. He's you would been, have to vote he's before been he wins. He's <laughs> been preaching the all-inclusiveness. Yes. Abu Sakara is the big name in there. Who else? I can see you have a list. Who else is in there on this... Uh, uh, alliance for Revolutionary yes, Change. Yes, it's, it's good to give it the chance because then Alliance partners will know that we also recognize the Alliance. We are not just carrying on as movement for change because now it's very significant. You have, of course, Dr. Abu Sakara, who is a very well-known name, a former presidential when he, candidate. When he contested on the CPP's CPP. ticket, yes. he was said to have won the presidential debate. But of course, he couldn't win the elections. Yes. Please go on. 
Thank you. Then you have uh, Bishop Dr. Samuel Noe Mensa of the Ghana First Coalition. You have Mr. Akwesi Adai Odike mm. of the Union Government Movement. You have Mr. Sam Ofori Ampofo of the Ghana National Party. You have Mr. Uh, Reverend Stephen Ayinsu, Green Ghana Party. Mr. Henry Asante, very interesting one. Mr. Henry Asante happens to be the current national second vice chairman of PNC. And he simply stepped out and said, look, I've been following the trajectory of the proposal, the plan that Allah has put forward. I think it is about time we changed the entrenched duopoly, which is not giving us value for our money. And I am ready to throw in my, my energies and, and my strength with you. Mrs. Augustina Kujo, Third Force Movement, and then Mr. Kofi Benibengo of the Non-Aligned Voters of Ghana. That is a very interesting group. This is At, nine in all? This is eight. Yes, exactly, nine. Nine in all. Yes. But there's a statement yeah. out there from the Crusaders Against Corruption yes. that they have been included in your list and they are not. We haven't officially included them in any list. Emmanuel uh, Wilson, yes. also formerly, also of the CPP, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And now... Yeah, crusaders against uh, right. corruption. Mm -hmm. Well, he attended the event. Yes, he, he's part he, of those whose hands are lifted there, is it? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. no, 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 was he? Okay, there's a crowd there, he's no, no, standing he's there. He's, okay. he's not. Okay. I don't know whether he is, but even if he, he is, mm -hmm. he hasn't signed. Okay. So we have not included him. So there's no confusion here? No, 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 but of right. course, he has shown a lot of interest, especially the principles and the values that the Alliance uh, stands for. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so basically... If you talk about whether we are spoilers, Alan is in to be a spoiler, my direct response to you is absolutely no. Alan means business. In fact, a lot of people don't know that Alan Chamatin first wanted to stand as presidential candidate for the NPP in 1996. That was the first time Alan showed interest. But for the intervention of... Uh, let Apia Menka and the rest of them. Alan would have been competing against Professor Dubuahin, against Dr. Selby, against uh, President Kufour, and the rest of them at Legon. You know, so from that time until now, Alan has consistently shown that, look, I have something to offer as a person. But you acknowledge that it's a difficult terrain. Of course. Here is a case you are dealing with mindset and you're having to do mindset change. You're having to deal with traditional relationships. You're having to deal with emotional relationships. You're having to deal with support that sometimes doesn't depend on anything but the fact that my family happens to be UP. Do you believe that the wave that Peter Obi brought into the Nigerian politics, yes. which was also thought in a similar way that there were two parties, you can't break into yes. them, and he came with such a surprise. Do you believe that that's the kind of face you bring to Ghanaian politics? Um, when you listen to Alan's value proposition, he says, one of the key sectors of our community, our population I'm going to focus on, youth and women. As I speak to you now, of the estimated, almost confirmed 16 million voters, 70% of them, are between the ages of 18 and 45. Incidentally, a lot of this segment are not so deeply steeped in the political traditions of MPP and this. You can go and check. Their own loyalty, especially the youth. These are young people, a lot of whom have come out of universities, technical training institutions, haven't got jobs. And Alan is saying, you look at my blueprint, look at my track record in government. My focus has been creating avenues for jobs. Even as a minister, I have done so much. But given the fact that the president holds the final back and that the president can either accept a minister's proposal for a new initiative in a certain particular sector or ministry or not, imagine you Ghanaians, God willing, making me president. Like President Kufour had a certain focus, macroeconomic stability, some social interventions. President Kufour has a certain focus, free SHS, planting for food and jobs. Those, I would say, were projects, and they're very, very good. Mm. 
Alan comes and tells you that, listen, my focus is on something that would radically change the foundations of the economy that we are running. Now, when President Kufuado talked about the Gajisberg economy when he was a candidate, and that he was going to change that when he becomes president, I was expecting the kind of change that Alan is talking about, something radical, something revolutionary. That is when you would say you have moved away mm. from a Gorgesberg mm. economy into a new kind of economy. Give but me, to give a very me, large extent, we are still sort give of blocked. Me, give me the next uh, five minutes. Okay. Let's donate the next five minutes to um, Reverend, uh, is it Dr. John Pippi? Dr. John Pippi. I'm sure you may have heard about the Grand Coalition Ghana. Yes. The Grand Coalition Ghana says they are rescuing Ghana for all generations. And they are, I'm putting the, the picture of the persons there who have also come together to form a coalition yes. for you to see. Um, Teria, Teria Nkrumah, uh, Jacob Oseyebua, presidential candidate, independent we have seen before. Yeah. Uh, Uwura. In Tim Ejakon, then Dr. John Pippi, Richmond Owusu Frimpong, Kenneth Kwame Asamoa, um, Dr. Edward Ohiniche, Apostle Augustine Yao, um, Kuma, okay, Kuma Kuma, Kuma and, Kuma. Man, Kuma. Yes, Kuma Kama. yes, Kuma and Kama, okay, Kuma and also Reverend Dr. Samuel. Uh, Walanyo Mensa. They come together to make the Grand Coalition Ghana. My question to you is, why are you not reaching out? Do you need to be sp uh, split in the manner we are seeing it now? Um, Dr. John Pippi, thank you for your time. And very br briefly, um, some of the people in your group coming together, we don't appear to know them. Thank you, pardon? I said some of the people in your group coming together to form the Grand Coalition Ghana, we don't appear yeah. to know them. Sorry? In the Grand Coalition? What's your plan? Why coming together separately rather oh. than joining forces with those who have opened the, the doors for you to come together? Well, uh, it is still work in progress. The Grand Coalition is the initial effort to get uh, like-minded leaders together. However, there are several others that are uh, in We can hardly hear you. Hello, Dr. John Pippi. Hello? Okay, sounds a little better. Please go on. Okay, thank you very much. I'm saying that the, the Grand Coalition is work in progress, and there are uh, those of us chairs are there right now, you must have seen in a poster, it's just, just a starting point, and several others are lining up. I'm part of this, and they're reaching out, and the group is also reaching out to many more uh, to, to, in fact, in the end, unite all those traditionally called the third force, that we now call it the alternative leadership space. What are your constituencies that you are bringing together in this grand coalition? Each of the three, uh, they've got the leaders of political already, the groups that have got... Uh, uh, different levels of penetration into this country. Some are relatively small, others are much bigger, and uh, uh, so it's, uh, it covers a whole range of uh, uh, stature. The argument has been that you are better off seeking parliamentary seats so you can make inroads into parliament and then take it on from there rather than seeking presidential slots. Well, it is not uh, one or the other. Uh, we are working with uh, presidential, sorry, uh, parliamentary candidates as well. In fact, we have identified a number of constituencies where, uh, which are known as uh, swing constituencies, uh, where uh, the 
voters swing from one party to the other, and we are asking credible parliamentary candidates for all players as well. So that that's, this space is not devoted to only presidential aspirants. I mean, maybe you might be misled from looking at the pictures there, but it's going to be uh, people working in all these all right. Uh, final question to you. Are you not interested in joining forces with the Alliance for Revolutionary Change, led by uh, Alan Sherman Ting? Well, uh, we do not believe that uh, he represents the uh, traditional, what I'm calling the traditional, the, the, of space. Too much of the old, uh, too much of a copy of the old coming back, you know. And we felt that too much of a uh, died in the wool MPP. We just, we want a fresh face, a brand new face to represent this uh, alternative space. All right, Dr. John Quigley, thank you very much. Unfortunately, your line has not been the best, but I think we've gotten something out of you. And so, um, Nano if you can give me oh. just two minutes, and then I go to my guest for brief comments and we go. So, you have a group to try and reach out to. Obviously, obviously, that is very important. In fact, what has happened is that even with the launch of the alliance, we are still in discussion with some other groups who could have signed and joined, but for fact that they needed to sort out certain details with their own executives and members before they get accused of having gone to sell out and this and that. So we are still in discussion with quite a number of individuals and groups and entities okay. who have clearly expressed interest in the agenda that, first of all, Movement for Change put forward. Secondly, the alliance now has come together to even lift up to a certain level, All right. and then eventually the candidacy of Alan Chamating for the president as independent. Yes, uh, Dr. Kamna Donko, uh, you guys must be frightened. Absolutely not. Um, and let me make this clear. Contrary to what the former General Secretary of the MPP has said, marketing a former cabinet minister of the MPP, I affirm that there's despondency in the MPP camp. I affirm that. <laughs> that there is discouragement, there's apathy every, in the MPP camp. And so we are not surprised from the NDC that a former general secretary of the MPP and a former cabinet minister of the MPP are looking at uh, reviving their base. There's a former president who says, I have been there. Give me the next op the opportunity again. I can do it better. No, what I want listen, to listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. So for us, our base is solid. Our base is excited. They are working extremely hard. We are, you go to the university campuses, the youth are uh, running to us. You go to the markets, we are hitting there. And there is such dynamism in the NDC. You haven't heard Ghanaians who say there's no difference between you and the NPP? Oh, virtually all those saying are uh, NPP, disappointed NPP members and NPP apologies. So that one we, we, is their old uh, game trick. But for us as NDC, we are so focused and our base is so solid. In fact, it's so exciting. So we can understand that our opponents have issues with our party, they have issues with As a politician, you don't take things we, for granted the no, way you have just said. No, you we, can't ignore this movement. We, for us, this is a faction of the MPP, simple and straightforward. So it is MPP internal re, political re-engineering. Re re there are PNC guys there, Henry Asante and uh, the rest of them. Look at, look, at, look at their votes. Look at their votes. So for NDC, But a simple first vote of all, matters because that is what wins elections listen, in Ghana. Listen, listen. First of all, NDC, we are focused on what we are doing. What we are doing is to rescue this country from eight years of underachievement. We are focused on that. Most importantly, we are also focused on mobilization. Mm. We are a social democratic party. We okay. are mobilizing. Mm. And so we 
I affirm what all he has said, the despondency. You are repeating it's, that. Yeah, it's from the MPP camp. All right, Kwanka, what do you have to say? Look, for the first time this morning, I vehemently disagree with you. <laughs> you know, you can, as a political class, because you are looking for power, you can pretend and say what you want to say. But touch base at the rural areas and look at certain projects that have been executed by this government over eight years and the appreciation that is being shown by rural folks as far as uh, the new patriotic party is concerned. Talk about the various interventions we've made in various facets of our national life, including but not limited to free senior high school and there are many, many, many inter inf massive infrastructural development across the country and et cetera. And you come to the conclusion that the new patriotic party is poised to retain power on the 7th of December. But very briefly, this is a very good elder brother and friend, very, very good elder brother and friend over the years. But I'm sad where he is today. I'm very, very sad. He was and your I, best, and he must remain so. I, I, I want you to... Must be, you I must want be to, frightened. I want to invite him to, to, to have a second look at what they are doing and come back home. Okay. Because it's not too late. You From see, what you I am saying heard, this... Just I'm saying 30 this, seconds. In 30 yeah. seconds, <laughs> I'm encouraging him that he used to be one of the persons that some of us looked up to and we want him to come back. It's right. not late. Mm -hmm. Look, if Alan had won the primaries in the first round and gone ahead to win the presidential primaries, MPP would not be described in terms they are describing now. Right. They would have wished that Baumia and other people should come and support. Mm -hmm. In like manner, Dr. Baumia has been elected by Thank you. People. Thank you very much. Come on board. Thank you very much. Yeah, and that's all time will allow us. But if you can, some 30 seconds, what do you have to say to yeah, close? Uh, for me, it's, it's quite funny that anybody would think that what is happening with the movement for change and this alliance is a joke, more or less, and that anybody is going to reconsider before December 7th. This is serious business. And for a person like me, who has been General Secretary of MPP, and coming from the kind of background that I am, both in terms of public media and politics, from the late 70s until now, to take a decision of this nature, I mean, I must have thought very deeply. Too. All right. Alan Chamating himself. Now, you know, when people come to this kind of radical decision, then you should realize that, look, it gets to a point where you tell yourself, enough is enough. All right. Thank you very much, Nana yeah. Ohenin, to Thank you. a senior Thank you. advisor. Nana, come back, come back, come back home. <laughs> Dr. Kabna Dufour, <laughs> Kabna uh, Donko. It's your wish. Come back home. It's your wish. <laughs> Joseph Dindio Penka, a former oh, yeah, deputy attorney boy, general yeah. and minister uh, for justice. Um, I'm Samson Ladia Yenini. This has been News File. Join us again next week for another interesting edition of the show. My outfit uh, these days will be by Konati Clothing. You can find them at Adenta Shopping Center, Adenta Down. And you can call them 0244 676732. Have a good afternoon.